All right, welcome everyone to Spiritual Inspirations with Malak, as well as with Amalia. Um, we are very excited to come to you after being on a long break, so to speak, but it's not really a break. We were actually traveling <laughs> across the world, and so we are here today uh, doing this video and just wanted to share a little bit with you. I hope that the camera is not shaking too bad because I'm trying to hold it. And if it is, please uh, forgive me for not being as steady as I should be. But we're kind of impromptu. We are here on our balcony and trying to do this video so that we can kind of share our spiritual perspective as it relate to our travel experience. Um, Amari, would you like to say anything to our um, audience? Hello, everyone. Coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya, and excited to share the new topic that we have to share with you today. All right. So... We want to talk about some things that most, not most people, I should say, there are people who deal with levels of fear, uh, especially when it comes down to flying internationally, because we're not talking about a one hour or a two hour journey. We're speaking about many hours off the ground in the air. And not just in the air a little bit, but up about 42 to 43,000 feet in the air, traveling for 14 straight hours in the air. And the different things that can take place while traveling that can leave you a little bit unnerved, especially if you're not used to flying. And this was my wife's first time flying. Now, when we left Charlotte, she got a chance to have a short flight from Charlotte to New York, which she, I think, had an opportunity to get some of the nerves out. <laughs> because when you've, done, when you've never done something, it's natural uh, to have um, a nervous uh, tendency um, and even sometimes a little fear. But how do you cope? Let's just ask her, how did she cope? Was there any uh, techniques that you used in trying to cope with the situation? Definitely. Uh, getting there to the airport was the first part of the nerves. Um, but then I did what we've been talking about for several weeks, which is focus on taking control of my own mind and taking control of my mind helped ease my fears. And once we just began to leave the ground, I immediately closed my eyes and began to meditate on good things and meditate on positive and not anything negative at that point. Okay. So meditation, which is a spiritual principle, seemed to help you um, through this uh, new experience and so that is something that we all have to really keep in mind is that meditation is a tool now I'm going to try to see if I can do a little something better with this phone that's going to stabilize it just a little bit so that I don't shake so much in trying to do this presentation okay so I think that helps a little bit but a little bit more um, so when you're having these uh, adverse feelings, you're having these nerves, meditation truly can slow your thoughts down, push those negative thoughts out, try to think and pull in positive uh, thoughts, which will then change the frequency uh, of the experience. Um, give a more positive energy. Sometimes you can just kind of 
um, change the, the pattern of thought, put your mind on something completely different, mm -hmm. strike up conversation, <laughs> you know, um, all these things are happening internally. And when you have internal things happening and there's no physical um, solution, that means it's somehow a spiritual situation that one must deal with it more on a spiritual level. Uh, meditation, positive thinking, um, all of these types of things changing uh, the narrative of what's going on at that moment to produce a more positive uh, outcome in your, at least in your mind. Because your mind has a way of either making things better or worse. Yes. And so um, I think that that was a great experience for us both in the physical aspect as well as the spiritual when you're in situations where you feel out of control, because when you're in the air, you're not in control, <laughs> you know? Uh, your, your, your desire is for that plane to successfully make it from one destination to the next. And so there's a lot of what people call praying, a lot of uh, uh, meditation, thought processes, and you, re you really realize that you're really tapping into a spiritual, uh, realm, so to speak. And so, uh, after getting to the ground in New York, how did you feel? I felt great. Um, the bugs or the queasiness was out of my stomach at that point. But I would just like to say, talking, going back to the spiritual journey, if you want to mm -hmm. go back to that. Um, when you're up there, spiritually, we, we tend to all want to depend on the creator right mm -hmm. and we know that nothing can happen without us depending on the creator so not one bit of my focus was on the pilot not one bit of my focus was on getting to the destination but i felt very comfortable that the creator had me in his hands or had me was holding me and so spiritually going back to all of it is um, a journey of you making sure that you are not walking in fear mm -hmm. because the, if I would have had one bit of fear, the planes, I, I, people are probably taking planes way more than me, of course, mm -hmm. but you are on a small plane, which can make you feel claustrophobic, right? And that if I had had any amount of fear, I could have started hyperventilating, started not feeling well so definitely uh get yourself to a spiritual plane in your mind mm -hmm. you know the saying the mind is a terrible thing to waste mm -hmm. um instead of wasting your thoughts on the negative use your mind to focus on the good things and before i left of course i did that great meditation of be trying to connect my spirit being with the creator becoming one with the creator and feeling calm and doing it in an everyday life helped me do it on the plane. But spiritually, I will have to say, maybe not that's, that's not the journey for everyone with the plane, but if you apply that principle to everything, absolutely, mm -hmm. of overcoming with your mind, and letting your spiritual side, not not religious, but the spiritual side of you know that no matter what, the creator got you, mm -hmm. will help you. That's right, sounds, that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I don't have anything to add to that. So, um, we left New York mm -hmm. knowing that we would be in the air now for 14 straight hours. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you've got a taste of what it was like. Now, you just really have to settle your spirit. Mm -hmm. Because you're, you, this is not a one, two hour thing. You need to just settle your spirit, get your mind right, and just be ready to take the journey. And in any aspect of life, you have to you have your mind right, 
to take the journey. I don't care if it's work. I don't care if it's family, marriage, whatever it is. You know there's going to be some turbulences along the way. You know there may be uh, times when alarm bells go off or um, some type of you know situation where you're uncomfortable. You know, I got a bad cramp <laughs> in my leg and I had to deal with that situation. You know, didn't have enough water. That, that's, that's really what it was all about. I, I should have drank more water um, prior to those flights. And uh, I usually do drink quite a bit of water, but uh, some, so much was going on that water ended up being the last thing kind of on my mind. But I ended up with a cramp episode. So just dealing with life situation through spiritual principles is a, um, a must, no matter what your situation is. Now, we want to shift gears because... I wanna, oh, go, go I ahead. I want to say something she about She got to add something. I do. <laughs> I want to add to that cramp, right? How when Malak did get that cramp, I had to move to the window seat. Um, and starting on flight one, I was like, oh no, put me in the aisle seat. I will. I don't want to be, or in the middle, I don't want to sit on the, um, near the window. But I had to move to the window seat so he can have more of the leg room. And that was a spiritual journey. Oh my goodness, such a spiritual journey. Are you, I think you might be about to go into that, but mm -hmm. that was a spiritual journey move into that window seat and I'll let you start okay. and I'll tell about it. Alright. So she tried to provide a segue <laughs> for me to talk about this. Um, when we were uh, in, in the religious circles and in uh, cu cultural religious spaces, you know, there were always the issues and conversations and sometimes debates on day and night man did we experience something that was so powerful about day and night traveling from the united states in new york on the east coast all the way to nairobi we left in the daytime we found ourselves flying into the night and notice now what I'm getting ready to say and back into the daytime somebody need to really think about what I just said on a 14 hour flight we left in the daytime flew into the night and flew back into the day before our flight was over I don't know if you got it, but I'm gonna let you share what you want to share, <laughs> then I'll round it up. Uh, um, that spiritual journey was, it, I was looking out the window, watching everything. My my goal was to see if I can see it, the sunrise, right? So, or the sunset, actually, um, because we left In New daytime. York about what, noon? Was no, it, no, it was uh, 145. 145. In the afternoon. So I was like, oh, well, maybe I'm going to get be able to drive ride right into looking at the sun going down. That's going to be beautiful. Instead, it went pitch black. Pitch black. Like. No sun down. No sun. <laughs> <laughs> and it was only about, what, maybe six hours in or something like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Might, might, maybe, I don't, maybe, I don't maybe. Even know if it was that many hours. I maybe not, because we were it, going straight across the ocean. It actually was, it was on the clock in the east at that time, it was about four. Mm. Because I remember looking at my clock and we were riding over what was known as Casablanca. Mm. And I remember looking at the map because she showed me how, mm -hmm. to, how to look at it. And when i say pitch black like i'm not talking about a little bit of dark i'm talking about it felt like light to dark completely dark and with that complete darkness we ended up um it ended up 
having to be in a topic of conversation because Daniel was sitting in another place and he's like, man, did y'all experience that? It felt like a new journey. But here's the thing. We went from our time and skipped ahead about six hours, I think, in that time of, a, of the day, the next day. So when we left, it was on a, what, Monday? Yes. And the six hours ride, we were already in Tuesday. <laughs> it was already Tuesday. That was so amazing to me that spiritually, it took me to another level that I began to say, okay, all that I knew, I know no more. All that I thought I knew, because when you are taught in the U.S., everything that we are taught in the U.S. is based on everything. They base everything off of them. So you think everybody else around you is dealing with what U.S. laws, principles, everything. We think that they're like the dominant everything. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I realized that the dominance was the creator. Mm -hmm. I realized that there's nothing that we can do about anything because we jumped ahead a whole day. So um, the other the other thing I realized I don't um, was there's a there's always a big topic about day and night, um, especially in some of the religious circles, right? And so I started saying we have been arguing or debating of when the Shabbat starts. So if it is Friday in another place that is a full seven, eight, nine, twelve hours ahead, right? It is will already be their Shabbat. So I started to realize how people say that the day that the Shabbat starts on a Friday night. <laughs> because in Africa, it is a Shabbat. We are already into 6.49 p.m. here. And I believe there it might be 9 a.m.? No, no, uh, it is 11, it 11? should be 11.49. 11 something, so a whole day ahead so i see how people can say that because it is shabbat somewhere mm -hmm. on a friday night in the u.s mm -hmm. so in the u.s a friday night it is people are already well into their shabbat mm -hmm. so i see now um where all the confusion comes from but again back to that ride the creator created everything right he created mm -hmm. everything. Um, and so with everything being created, he created the, 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 the night, the day first, everybody mm -hmm. says, right? But the scripture says, <laughs> and upon the dark, mm -hmm. he created light. Mm -hmm. So then what came first? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The night or the day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what it made me think of. And all this time, everyone around the globe we based everything off of the u.s mm -hmm. how because the u.s is not first in the cycle of light of day and night it is not the u.s is not first the u.s is last, <laughs> it is last. in the in the cycle of day and night absolutely and so that that right there is just mind blowing as we went through day we left day went to night and back into day back into day huh? <laughs> back in today that was that, that was amazing that was simply amazing so when we landed finally it was tuesday morning mm -hmm. right we left that day which was a whole nother thing and we was in darkness and we were there for maybe six hours mm -hmm. and within six hours we was into a whole nother day because technically leaving at 145 mm -hmm. on a Monday in mm -hmm. New York, mm -hmm. drive, flying for 14 hours, we would have been, uh, we should have been in the middle of the night at 345 mm -hmm. when we arrived. Right. But it was almost noon was in the daytime noon. when we got to where we were going. Oh, so it changed my life uh, 
about thinking about the night and day, honestly. It changed my life because it basically, if you were looking at that and you were in the light and all of a sudden you went to dark, it really takes your breath away. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. what just happened? Mm -hmm. But with no fear, I knew I was okay. Mm -hmm. With no fear, I knew that whatever I was going to go into, I had to get through. Mm -hmm. And that's how we have to be with everything every single day. You don't know what is coming after what the, the moment you are in. You do know that you left something a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And there is a way that you just go through whatever you have to go through mm -hmm. without fear mm -hmm. and make it yeah and make it yeah see that that transition of coming being in light meaning we have some uh, life situations where everything is good mm -hmm. you're in the daytime mm -hmm. hey that's good and then when it, things go bad you're in the night mm -hmm. but it reminded me that that night didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. It lasted for its period of time, mm -hmm. but it didn't even it didn't even last what we consider a whole night cycle, mm -hmm. because we were flying and moving. Mm -hmm. If you just keep moving, mm -hmm. you eventually find your way back to the daylight. Oh, good. And so that spiritual experience, that actual experience, meaning physical experience as well as spiritual experience, was very enlightening. And the fact that the other side of the world is experiencing something way before the United States called the West is experiencing it. When we try to base some things based on a principle of being actually second fiddle to the world as far as the creator's power that he made the earth. He made the earth and the light of day and night to happen on another side of the earth before it ever comes to the United States. Mm -hmm. That is eye-opening. Mm -hmm. You can say, well, yeah, you should have already known. Yeah, we, we, we know that in our head. But when you see it happening with your own eyes and you experience going from day into night and back into the day, going in one direction we're not talking about going out of day into the night and turning back around and coming back to day uh uh <laughs> we're talking about being in day going to night and continuing to go to your hit day again seemingly that's kind of impossible but it happened and it was very eye opening and I see how this clearly is another uh, point of emphasis and evidence about the Bible and how this thing was made by man and how he tried to take this thing and now we have people teaching it as if everything was taking place in America. Mm -hmm. It just can't be. And then if you're basing everything off of well we have to wait till the light get to us before it is what it is and the light already happened on the whole other side of the world mm -hmm. well which one was first mm -hmm. this side of the world or that side of the world mm -hmm. see there's a lot to learn from that and I hope that we tried to do our best to communicate that experience and that you could kind of bring all of that together and, and understand how that relates in a spiritual connotation and how um, powerful, if you really stop and think, how powerful that is, that heading in one direction, you went through two phases of light and one phase of darkness. Mm. And guess what? By the time we got to our destination, we were going to end up at night again. Okay. Whew. What about that? So... Just like to leave my spiritual nugget. Go ahead. As always, I would like to try to leave us all with some kind of spiritual nugget. And today we talked about fear. So my spiritual nugget to everyone today is you can get through those dark times 
because light is just right there waiting for you. You can make it through any of those times that come because you're going to start with light. You're going to have a moment of darkness, but you're going to have light again. And spiritually, your mind, you can overcome those things. Becoming one with the creator, knowing yourself, as we said before, and controlling your mind. Fear is only going to overtake you because you allow it. Kick fear in the butt and become spiritually empowered. That's All right. My nugget. Wonderful. All right. Uh, we hope that we've said something to at least um, kind of stir some thoughts and uh, allow you to have an opportunity to meditate on what we've said and to think about some of the things we said. And um, we're doing great here in Nairobi, Kenya. We love and miss all of you who we've uh, spent uh, many years with. We hope to see uh, some of you soon whenever we travel back or if you happen to travel this way. Uh, and so if not, you know, we will continue to uh, communicate the best we can, but we are here to uh, enjoy our life we're here to uh have a, a level of peace in our hearts and our minds uh, there's a lot of things happening in uh the usa and um we just really wanted to spend we're approaching those what we call retirement years and we want to spend those times in a level of peace in a level of um the new light light <laughs> joy uh and um rest from all the tur turmoil and all the years that we've dedicated uh in the religious spaces um this has just been uh wonderful and um we uh hope that those of you who uh you you were uh part of our life on a regular basis understand um that you know it's now time for me and my family um those that chose to come and you know if, if some of my family decides to come later hey we'll receive them uh but those that decide to come now we're just here to try to uh, build uh, a life of happiness and joy and peace for the remainder of time that we have here on this earth. One thing that's been very constant, you are born, you live, and you die. And we only have one life to uh, try to make the best of it. So we're here, we're loving it, we're enjoying it, uh, we're at peace, we, 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 we see melanation everywhere. So we see so much chocolate. Uh, it is just delicious. So refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just wanted to uh, come and touch bases with you. And um, we look forward to uh, another opportunity to share with you. But before we go, don't forget to uh, like, share, and subscribe. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my other channel, and that is What Time Is It? We're going to change it to what time is it with Malak. But right now it says, what time is it at what time is it dash M5K. That is how you find me because there's a lot of channels that says what time is it. All right. So if you want to find me specifically, that is how you would find me. And so stay tuned for the videos with what time is it as we travel, as we uh show you videos and uh, pictures of the different areas that we go to and the different experiences that we have. We have this channel to deal with more of the spirituality, that channel to deal with more of the international travel. And so if you can share the video with others, encourage them to subscribe and uh, like the videos, leave a comment, you know, and um, we we'll look forward to seeing you on this channel or on that channel. All right. Have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> and we will too. We love you and we'll see you next time. Say, say bye in Swahili. Kahere.
Wahiri. Wahiri. All right. Means bye.